Today is Thursday, April 23rd, and we continue to care for patients who are infected with the novel coronavirus. But the good news is, is that over 150 people who were admitted with the COVID-19 have been discharged and are healthy and home safe. Today, I have with me Luann Nursick. Luann is the Manager of Respiratory Services at Silver Cross. You know, respiratory therapists have played a key role in caring for patients. And I would say that they are the unsung heroes in this crisis. But at Silver Cross, we want to recognize their extraordinary efforts, not just over the past month, but every day at Silver Cross. So, Louie, are you comfortable taking off your mask for I certainly conversation? Am. Yes. We're, we're six feet apart. Well, let's start with you, Luann. How long have you been at Silver Cross? Yes, I have been at Silver Cross for over 31 years. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. A very long time. Right out of college, you I started here. You don't look old enough to have been here 31 years. <laughs> well, thank you, but I have. Yes, and I've been a manager for 24 of those years. Wow. Yes, wow. a very long time. You've very done fortunate. an excellent, excellent job. Thank you. And how many respiratory therapists are on your team? I have 54 currently on my staff, and that includes the registry department. And I could not live without the registry department. They, they're always very much helpful in our department to make sure we meet our staffing needs. Yeah. So, is, yeah, it, very is it hard to... Um, Recruit respiratory. Therapists? I think I think um, the the need is more and more in the in the community. So respiratory is um, evolving, and there are more areas as they add services. I think that it is going to be one of those positions in the future that are going to be in high demand. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we currently have you know a couple openings right now that we're you know that we mm-hmm. would like to get filled just to maintain you know in the future. But yeah, I think it is one of those yeah. important positions. What kind of training does a respiratory therapist? There, it is need? a two year program. So um, they specialize just in the heart and lung. Um, most there's a there's many colleges in the area that do that. Um, you can go on and get your bachelor's degree um, in healthcare leadership and, and different things like that. But it is a minimum of a two year program okay. to come out with your bachelor's degree. Okay. Well, setting the last few weeks aside. What is the typical role of a respiratory therapist? Sure. So respiratory therapists um, are ever-evolving, so they are on the move all day long. So we run by a point system. So every therapy or task that's ordered um, has a point value associated to it. And so those points are added up for a total for each shift, and that's how we base our staffing on it. So every day uh, we figure out how many staff members come in, and that Um, amount of therapy is divided amongst those staff. Mm -hmm. So then they disperse and then they go out throughout the hospital and they do their work. So there's usually typically two sets of therapy per shift um, that they treat normal normal therapies, whether it's med surge or surgical volumes, um, COPD, asthma, different things like that. So we treat anyone with a respiratory illness and it could be any type of diseases, but if they have any type of respiratory deficiency, we will probably see those patients. So it's not uncommon for a therapist to have 60 patients on their workload to Whoa. see in, a, in, in an eight-hour day. They check on them for oxygen therapy, um, their therapy in between, but we also go to every code. So, you know, there's a lot of codes that they call overhead, and usually respiratory therapists go to all of theirs, whereas with there's a code blue, a rapid response, which is a code ABC here, um, the strokes, the traumas, things like that. So we're very much, we call an emergent care department because we're always putting out fires mm-hmm. of patients that deteriorate and go bad, then they'll call that and we're a part of that care. That's a huge response. It is. It keeps them busy. I'm sure. And what has changed with the covid So, yeah. So when COVID hit, um, basically the hospital had to make some decisions as far as to close things down and surgeries and things like that to keep the um, the people safe and the employees safe. So the hospital basically turned into a COVID hospital um, and more so just an intensive care unit that was spread out amongst all these units. So we first of all, we implemented a respiratory protocol, which we had in place, but we made it widespread. And Dr. Yudovich and Dr. Sasenko worked with us to make uh, it uh, approved so that we could see all patients in the hospital to make sure that they were indicated for the therapy, to make sure the therapy that was given was in conjunction with the COVID the guidelines. So we wouldn't want to do any aerosolized medication. So that had um, streamlined our care very much so to make it meter dose inhalers instead. But we wanted to make sure that we were very cognizant of the amount of meter dose inhalers that we were using and we weren't using it 
on patients that didn't need it because there was going to be a widespread right. shortage we need on those. To conserve. conserve all of our resources. So that was one thing that changed. But also, um, the therapists were really spread out amongst the hospital, servicing the ER was in, you know crazy busy, and then the ICU, um, the, the the floors that were six three six four that started out COVID. Um, we tried to do all of our negative pressure rooms. And fortunately, the hospital was so good about getting as much negative pressure capability as we could, which was wonderful. But um, it quickly spread throughout all the other areas. So yeah. these patients that came in really had tendencies to deteriorate very fast. Um, so they started out maybe on a couple liters of oxygen, and many of them within hours of hitting the floor were being were crashing and intubated, and we would have to get them to the unit. So it was very stressful for the staff because it was critical ill patients everywhere throughout the hospital. And you're making sure that you're putting all the right PPE right. on, taking it off, making sure that when they put the intubation tube down in order for them to go on a ventilator, that was a very critical piece of part of the puzzle that you wanted to make sure that was contained so those droplets aren't going into the air to keep everyone safe. Yes. So it was um, a very much a, an organized Stressful, process, but... stress-filled environment. Um, on an ongoing basis. It was nothing to have three or four codes called at one right. time for a two-week period yeah. at, during our busiest point here. I understand that our vent utilization has actually declined a little bit recently. It which has. Is good news. Yes, wonderful news. Um, we reached a point, I think, where we had 28 ventilators oh running. It was, it was just enormous. And we had a surge plan that was ready. We worked on, and anesthesia was ready to go. They were going to help us um, ventilate some non-COVID patients or if COVID, if they needed to be. Um, but we were so good about it. The therapists were, uh, we had so many of our main elite ventilators, I should say, that could service the COVID patients. And we would all day long, that's what we did. We would keep those ventilators for our most critical patients. And then as they got improved, we would maybe switch those ventilators out to something that was less um, comparable um, but still ventilating them, and they would do okay on that. And that way we would keep the, the, the ventilator that we had for COVID patients ready to be used. So we were very fortunate. Not, you know, we were close, but we never ran out. And we did get some FEMA vents, so we were happy to get those, and yes. we utilized those. But um, it was a collaborative effort, Yeah, honestly. I think everybody can see why we say you are the unsung heroes of this crisis, because we, we couldn't have managed this without round-the-clock services from respiratory therapy. No, and we had, like I said, I, I honestly, we work very well with ICU nurses um, and the Med, Midwest Pulmonary Group. I mean, those yeah. physicians, I can't say enough about them. They worked tirelessly to help us along the way. Um, Dr. Sasenko, our medical director, was home, you know, creating devices that would help us be safe in an intubation setting. Uh, oh, intubation the boxes, plastic the plastic boxes. covers. I mean, yes. he, we got pictures of him at home yes. in it. And he was he's checked on me every day, even on the weekends from home. He would call Dr. Uh, McDonough was just awesome. Dr. Garapati in the unit. So the whole group, Dr. Was just, Lava Bidi, Dr. they worked tirelessly to help yeah. support us. And I think that we really gained rapport with them and the nurses that we realized that it is a team. Yeah. to take care of these critical ill patients. Absolutely. They couldn't do it without you, and you couldn't do it without them. Can't do it them. without them. Right. Is there anything you'd like to say to your staff? I want to say so much to, um, how grateful I am. I mean, I am, I've been the manager for so long, and that's for sure, but the recognition really goes to my entire staff. All three shifts, from the time this started, they never once wavered. You know, yes, they were nervous. Yes, they were worried about taking it home to their patient, or to their families. Um, there were some points where, you know, it was kind of hairy for a couple sure. weeks, but they showed up to work. Um, they never, never argued or never anything. We found time to be humorous and everything in the department in the time of all this pandemic. I can't thank them enough. I am so incredibly proud. Silver Cross should be proud of them. They are critical thinkers and they are just used to doing whatever's necessary yeah. to get through the thing. Um, we also wanted to thank you and Silver Cross for providing the amount of PPE um, we never once, and that was one thing across the board that Respiratory has said from the beginning, that they never felt once that their safety um, was in jeopardy. You know, we always had the amount of PPE. They wore the goggles, the face shields, the gloves, the gowns, the N95s, the, the all of it. And never once were they made to feel like they were going to have to, you know, Do to spread that. it out to, think, to, yeah. to make them safe. And so oh, I wanted good. to say thank you to Silver Cross for allowing us to be staffed accordingly. Um, and to be safe 
through this through this pandemic. Well, of course, mm-hmm. and I want to add my appreciation to all the respiratory therapists here. You have done an amazing, amazing job, and thank you, Luann, for your leadership, your tenure here, and you know your ability to really lead a collaborative team. Thank well, you. Well, thank you very much, Ruth. Thank you.